Hello everyone, it's Keisha. Welcome back. Today's video is about making a junk journal in a nutshell. I will be quick about how I'm gonna go about it. First I pick papers and here I have a stack of writing paper, either from a pad or copy paper that I dyed and put lines on. Then here I have a coloring page but it has lines on the back. This paper had the lines going this way so I put it through my printer and it has lines going this way now also. This paper is dyed with acrylics. I have a video about how to do that and I have a piece of paper from a notepad from some uh, company. So that's one stack. Second stack is a book page. I found this one and if the book is bound properly you can snip the threads and then take the whole page out. This way you have the whole page. Otherwise if you tear it you only left with half a page and when you fold it in it's only going to be this big. When I make a junk journal I would like the first page of the signature to be a little bit more sturdy so I'm going to use this page as the first one. So I have a dictionary page, music page, German writing book page. Again it was bound properly so then you can take the whole page out. This is from an atlas. Either I pick from an atlas or a roadmap. This is a calendar also from a book and then some different things. So a doily, an envelope that I will put in like so and then I will cut the ends off so that you can put things in. First time using a piece of fabric. I make my own texture paper and this is part of it but this is done on fabric. This is called a die catcher. You can buy this in a fabric store or in a quilt store and you put this in with your fabrics and then the die will instead of attaching to another piece of clothing or another piece of fabric it will attach to here. Don't ask me how it works but that's what it is. This used to be a placemat. I picked this up when I was in the Netherlands and I cut a piece off because otherwise it doesn't fit in a book. I will leave this one piece. The fold will be somewhere and then the rest will be folded in. Construction paper. These two papers you recognize they come in a package if you order something online. Piece of pattern paper. This is a piece of paper from my accidental journal where I scrape in all my leftover paints and sometimes they come out real nice so I'm going to include this one too and it has writing space on the back and a piece of wallpaper. I will put this in the right order and then I will go through it because I do want enough writing space for it. So for instance, uh, let me grab something. For instance, this is not a complete writing space paper. Well, you could write in the margins. On a page like this, I would add pockets either here or here so that you can put paper in it and then you can write on the paper so that the page is not lost. And I will balance it so that there's enough writing space versus other paper. The outside of my cover is usually made from fabric and this is an upholstery fabric. Then there's the core. It's a piece of cardstock that I painted on and it is not really nice so I'm gonna use it as a core. This is another piece of cardstock. I did some eco printing on paper and I really like them and I don't really want to use them so I put them through the scanner and I print them off on a piece of cardstock. So this is going to be the inside. Now if I decide I want to put pocket on the bottom, which I usually do, I will add a pocket before I put the cover together. The same way as that if I want to add some things on the front, I will do that before I put the pieces of the cover together. I have my pages in the right order and I've trimmed everything to eight and a quarter. This is called a signature. A note on a few papers. The calendar page is a flip up or a flip down and so the image is the right way up and the calendar page is the wrong side up. Then the other thing you need to keep in mind is that when you add a dictionary page that you go through the words so that there are no inappropriate words in the page. I'm going to use regular gel mat to glue my fabric to the core. Really take care of the edges and you got to be generous about it. You don't want this to come undone. Okay, so I'm going to let this dry. I've cut four inches of construction paper, folded it in half and this is going to be the pocket that is going to be attached to the lining of my cover and I'm going to use the sewing machine to sew all around to secure it. I added my elements to the outside cover and I've sewn the pocket to the inside cover and also I've made a few extra score marks so that the spine will be a little thicker and I added a piece of cardstock to the spine to make it more sturdy so that the spine stays like this wide. Now I'm going to glue this together and then I will sew the signature in here. Again I will be using regular gel mat and I will now put this together by sections. So I will do the center first and I'm going to use my finger because a brush takes up too much of the glue and I think that's a waste. Like before, be generous about it, especially the ends. So I'm centering the inside cover on top of the outside cover. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to add glue here. I will let this dry with a heavy book on top so that everything stays flat. I have all the papers in the right order and I've made pockets to some of them so I will give you a quick run through. 
nothing here, nothing here. Because this is a written page. Pockets on all sides. What I do on one side, I will do on the other. And I picked up a measuring tape that I cut up. I thought that was a neat additive. My fabric and wallpaper, don't do anything to that. Two little pockets here, two over there. On the other side, I didn't want to cover the whole scene, so I put two over there. The coloring page I left as is. I sewed some fabric to the edges. I really like the fuzzy feel of it when the book is closed. Two pockets on this side and two corner pockets on this side. And I did this color because it kind of went with the page. Side pockets on this paper. This is my envelope and I made an entrance to it and I inked it so that you can see it. And of course this is the pocket on the other side. Piece of fabric on the top. These papers are being left alone. And my sewing pattern has a pocket along the bottom. I found this napkin that had a 100 euro on it. I thought it was really nice, so I glued it to this paper. And again, I sewed two pieces of fabric on both sides. This is the placemat, and I sewed the pocket closed. Again, I really like these kinds of pockets, so... And it has fabric along the bottom. Fabric along the top. Corner pockets on both sides. And these are my gel prints. Another page with fabric on the edges. And this paper I left alone. I want to keep this video short, so I'm not going to show you the three whole pamphlet sets I'm doing to attach the signature into the cover. So I will come back when the book is finished. So my signature is bound in the cover. Then I added a piece of lace that was painted with acrylic paint so that it kind of hides the thread for the that the signature was bound into the journal. And this is a bit stiff, so now it opens up a little bit. But I'm gonna use this hair elastic to put around the book so that it stays closed. Added some metal to the corners of the book. I've also added some little booklets, cards or tags to some of the pockets just so that the recipient knows what to do with the book. And I'll give you a quick flip through So that was it. Thank you all for watching this video. I hope this was useful to you and we hope to see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.